All right, well, I think with that, what we're gonna do is move into some live 3D CAD modeling. I'm gonna do this using SolidWorks. I'm gonna use my absolute favorite build of SolidWorks, SolidWorks 2015. Uh, I just think SOLIDWORKS 2015 is that perfect merge between functionality and performance and stability. You get all three, it's that perfect Venn diagram. Uh, 42 shows up right in the middle of that Venn diagram, and so we know that we're in the right place. So here we go. We can see here that we are going to be modeling this using SOLIDWORKS, and the model is going to be this 23-12-05 sync weight. So this is a model that I posted last week as a practice model. There were several people who commented, said, hey, it'd be really great to see a tutorial on this one. So let's go through, let's do a live solve. And the very first thing that I'm gonna do is just kind of get my bearings. What are we asking for? We're asking for the mass of this part in XXX grams with a tolerance of plus or minus one gram. When we look down here in the title block, we can see that the material is 1060 aluminum alloy. The density is 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. And then we can start actually looking at the model itself. So now we kind of know, you know, what, what template we're going to be using. We kind of have a basic idea of what we're trying to accomplish. Now we can look at the, the print and kind of come up with a strategy. So the first thing that I'm going to notice is that the part is circular in nature. And so I'm probably going to use what's called a revolved feature, which means that my first sketch is going to be kind of a cross section, almost like what we see here in section AA. My first sketch is going to be a cross section like this, and then it's going to end up getting revolved into the third dimension to create a, a rounded part. The next thing that I'm going to be looking for is does the model have symmetry? And the reason this is important is because, you know, I, I now know what my first sketch is going to look like. Now, where is the origin? going to be for that first sketch well i think it, it makes sense to have the origin right here this is the axis about which things are going to be revolved and this also is going to represent the, uh, the 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 center point of the symmetry so whenever you have symmetry you're probably going to end up with an origin right at the center of that symmetry Oh, we got a uh, we got a super chat coming in here from Victor K. Thanks so much. It's got to run, but thanks for a great stream and congrats on the 10K. Excited for all the new website features. Well, thank you so much, Victor K. Yeah, we did show off a lot of new website features today. The new practice models functionality, the uh, the new training functionality on the website, the new tournament that's coming up. So thank you so much for for uh, appreciating that, and I'm glad you're getting value out of it. And thanks so much for the super chat. Very much appreciated, Victor K. Now. Where things get tricky on this model is that although the first feature I create is gonna be a revolve, my first sketch is actually gonna be a layout sketch. And the reason that I think we need to do that for this model is because of how this feature here is dimensioned. It's dimensioned at this corner. And this feature here is dimensioned, and this feature here is dimensioned. They're dimensioned down here at this lower line, but there's a slight gap here between that lower line and the center axis of revolution for this model. There's probably a gasket that fits in here. There's a, you know, like a little, you know, additional rubber gasket or sponge gasket or something like that that needs to fit in there in between the two halves. And that's why there's a gap there between the, uh, the geometry and the center line, the axis of revolution. So I think for this model, my first sketch is actually going to be a, a layout sketch. And that layout sketch is going to capture what this kind of half arc shape looks like here. So let's get started by doing a window snipping tool. I'm going to grab a screen capture of this print. I'm going to move this print over here to my second screen. And then I'm going to jump into SolidWorks and begin a new document. And you can see that I've got some templates here, some different templates that have some uh, possibly some different materials pre-cooked. But in this case, I've just got a template that has my uh, part set up in millimeters. And so I'm going to go over to my template. I'm going to say that I want to utilize the material here called 1060 alloy. And I'm also going to add a sensor here. So I'm going to right mouse button, add sensor. Now I did make a pro move video about this, a power move video about this, uh, showing that you can add in a sensor so that anytime you're working, you can immediately calculate the mass. So be sure to go back and watch that power move video. But from here, what we can do is we can go to our right plane, begin a sketch, orient our view. And now we're going to create what I like to refer to as a layout sketch. So this layout sketch is going to capture this kind of shape looking in from the end here, the shape that's shown in section BB. And so to capture that shape, what I'll do is I'll create this kind of uh, a half circle here. Now, the way that I did this, uh, this little wedge was I started out with a line a little bit above the origin, single click. I move my mouse up here, single click again. I come back and touch the end point and that takes you into a tangent arc. Well, after I hold my mouse over the end point, instead of moving up, I'm going to move off to the left 
And that gives me tangency to the perpendicular. And that's a, a really valuable skill to learn in SolidWorks because it can, it can save you a lot of time. Uh, these scenarios come up very frequently. So now I'm going to take all that geometry and do a mirror entities. We talked about that in a, a power moves as well. And then I can add in this dimension of 52 representing the width at that location. And then I can add in this dimension here of 24 by holding shift and picking this arc while I'm dimensioning. So we're going to make that 24. So there we go. And then the thing is, this arc here, this this uh, radius 24 in section BB, it's called out as a standard arc. So uh, it, I'm going to take this, this arc and make it concentric to the origin. So make those two concentric. And you can see that just by doing that, by defining the height of the arc, the width of the arc, and then defining the center point of this arc as being concentric to the origin, it locked down that sketch. It gave me all the geometry that I needed for that sketch. And that's kind of the, the the tricky element of this design is just getting that arc laid out. Because once we have that arc laid out, in fact, I'll rename this here to layout sketch. I'll, uh, a lot of times what I'll do with my layout sketches is I'll take those sketches and I'll do a, a right mouse button and add a sketch color here. I'm going to make this like a magenta. You know, magenta is my favorite color. And um, I'm going to do one last thing here that I think will help you. I'm going to make sure that this point is coincident to the, the peak of the arc here. And you'll see in just a moment why that's helpful. But now what I can do is I can exit that layout sketch and I can go to the front plane, begin a sketch. And now I'm going to know that, you know, this line of the sketch on the front plane is going to come from the, the, the midpoint of that layout sketch. And this line that's on the, the sketch that's going to end up being revolved is going to come from that, that peak point of the arc. So here's kind of what that sketch geometry looks like in section AA. And this is the geometry that's going to end up getting revolved. Now, it's not going to be revolved about this line here. It's going to be revolved about, you know, a center line that's coming off the origin down here at the bottom. But the point is that by getting in there and creating that arc as a layout sketch first, I really set myself up nicely for success here in going in and creating this addi additional geometry here, the section AA sketch. So now if I get normal two section AA, you know, I'm confident that all the dimensions uh, that you know, that are black here are correct. And so all I need to do is add in this dimension here at 20 millimeters and add in this dimension here at 17 millimeters and add in uh, this overall length of the part, which is 58 millimeters. So let's do a mirror of this geometry. I'll create a center line there, window all this, do a mirror, and then that's going to be a total of uh, 50, what is it, 58? 58 millimeters and then from there i'm able to take that geometry and turn it into a revolve so i'm going to take all this geometry here i'm going to revolve it about the um the the center line um this can you know this thing having a hole in the middle it really is um uh, inconsequential because i'm going to just end up lopping that geometry off anyway so i could go in here i could i could pre-select this line i could go here to features revolve and revolve it like that or i could have it be solid it doesn't matter because the next step that i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the right plane begin a sketch and convert this line here to convert that into the current sketch and then i'm going to go into the command um extrude cut so features extrude cut and i'm going to say through all in both directions and what solidworks does is it turns that into a surface cut so the only thing i need to do now is say do i want to cut away in this direction up or do i want to flip that and cut away in the down direction you can also click on that arrow to do that so cut away up cut away down there we go we hit the green check mark and that is the main shape that we're trying to create in this uh in this design that's the main shape that we're trying to create in this design. Now, the remaining geometry that we're trying to create in this design is that kind of internal geometry that's that's going to be cut revolved. So once again, I'm going to get in here. I'm going to create a center line here. And once again, it doesn't really matter if this geometry overlaps uh, with the the or to the origin or not. What I mean is I think it intuitively it makes sense to kind of create this geometry to look like this where you're actually coming all the way down to the, the origin to create the geometry for the cut revolve. And then this is gonna come over. We'll use some auto dimensioning here to kind of speed things up. So, whoops, or maybe not, <laughs> slow things down. So that's gonna come over at two. This is gonna come down here a little bit. It's gonna come over, it's gonna come back up um, and align with that same line there. Then it's gonna come to the center. And then all that geometry is gonna be mirrored. So using some, uh, some little tricks here to kind of uh, mirror more efficiently. And then this is going to have a distance, again, from this, this lower line here. It's really dimensioned um, 
strangely. I don't know who created this original print, but they really they really made it strange. <laughs> They're probably a really strange fella. All right, and then this is gonna be off at a distance of five millimeters. And uh, this final one here is going to be at a, uh, a depth of five millimeters to that same almost arbitrary flat spot. But I, I get why they're doing it. They're, they're trying to define some type of a clearance um, specification. So I get it. So then we're gonna pre-select this line because we have two center lines in the sketch. We're gonna jump into a revolve cut. We're gonna revolve cut that away. And that leaves us with that shape. And that looks pretty good. Pretty much like what we're hoping for there. And uh, then the final thing that we're going to be doing with this model is we're going to be creating the geometry that's shown in the top view, which is the geometry for those kind of tapered uh, arc cutouts. So we'll go here, uh, top plane, begin a sketch, orient the view. I've been using the uh, offset uh, at the start of an extrude a lot more lately. I used to make explicit planes for this type of functionality, but lately I've been doing this a lot more often with the, uh, the offset, uh, offset to the plane location. So the distance between these two is 36. So I could create a center line here like so. And then once I create that center line, I could go from this arc to the center line, cross over it, make that 36. And, um, and then this should be, okay, so it's not fully constrained. So I just grabbed the point here and moved it. So I just need to make that vertical. And there we go. It's more or less fully constrained. I could also constrain that here at the end, but I don't really need to for this example. And so now I'm going to do an extrude cut. And then um, here, you know, this extrude cut is going to go through all, but it's not going to start at the sketch plane. It's going to start from an offset. So we're going to say that's going to offset to a distance of, let's see here, 10. Oh, it's actually 10 from, not from the top plane, but from this lower, lower surface here. That's kind of interesting. So um, let's I'll make that an offset of 10 and we'll go through all and then I'm going to go back into that feature. I'm going to right mouse button on this sketch here and from the right mouse button, I'm going to say edit sketch plane and it's going to be sketched on this face here because that uh, offset distance that's called out in section BB is offset from, from this face, not from the top plane. So there we go. That creates that geometry. Now, as I was creating that geometry, I also could have said that I want that to extrude with draft and specify that nine degrees of draft going outward. And that way it just takes care of all of that geometry, you know, in one single feature. I don't have to go back in and make a secondary draft feature. And so um, now what I could do is hide this sketch, uh, take this face here, begin a sketch, and this is just going to be a straight hole, which is going to have a diameter of, let's see here, through, uh, five through. So we'll take this face here, wake up the center point, give that a diameter of five, and then extrude cut, and that's going to run through all. And then finally, we will take those two features, uh, hold control, continue to hold control, pick the plane that we want to mirror about, let go of control, and we've mapped the mirror shortcut right here to the context toolbar. We talked about this in a power move video um, just, uh, I think, two weeks ago. So um, if you didn't get a chance to watch that, watch that power move video. But there you go, and we can do a rebuild, and we can see that we're coming up with a total mass here of 119 grams. And so if we go back into the PowerPoint, 117 grams oh no <laughs> we're off by a little bit uh but uh i could go back in i could revise that um and try to figure out where we're off by but uh that is the gist of how to create that model uh using solidworks using my favorite build of solidworks solidworks 2015 and i hope that you found that helpful if you did be sure to like be sure to subscribe and be sure to come back for some more of these tutorials um, and of course we really enjoy doing these live solves during model monday live so let's get back into it here. We're winding down on the hour. We're right at the top of the hour.